everybody can see my screen. Crystal uh, clear. I, and I'd like to talk about end-to-end, uh, -end what we call platform agnostic laser solutions. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Rajan Rajgopal. I'm the uh, president and CEO of uh, Dense Light Semiconductors. I'd like to first start by uh, just looking at Denslide at a glance. So we're a company that provides a one-stop design and manufacturing solution for a variety of optoelectronic devices as well as uh, integrated photonic solutions. Uh, we have over a hundred passionate, innovative manufacturing technologists from 11 different nationalities. Uh, we have two uh, official sites, uh, but one global R&D team that is actually based here in Singapore. Uh, we have a pretty large customer base all over the world, uh, about 150 plus customers in 26 countries, uh, basically serving uh, telecommunication markets, the biomedical, instrumentation, industrial, defense and security, and of course the data center business that is so hot right now. Uh, we are an innovative uh, Singapore-based company. We are providing uh, state-of-the-art products and solutions really by exploiting some proprietary technology that uh, has been uh, developed over time, uh, over the last 20 years uh, for hybrid uh, integrated photonic solutions. Some key milestones uh, and our evolution. Uh, so the company was founded in year 2000 uh, by a group of four professors uh, from the National Technological University here in Singapore. Uh, uh, with a significant amount of uh, investment by private as well as uh, uh, the government here in Singapore to set up an Indian phosphide based uh, wafer fab, uh, as well as develop uh, some products uh, specifically for the sensing market, which was a uh, telecordia compliant SLED uh, device, uh, as well as a narrow line with laser. So the first few years of Denslide was spent developing these products. And then in the 2008, uh, when there was a uh, you know, financial crisis and a downturn, uh, the company kind of focused or changed its focus uh, into more uh, uh, doing development work for uh, uh, defense department, uh, both for the DARPA, uh, which is the US Defense Department, as well as DSO, which is in uh, Singapore. So many years were spent uh, doing some project level work uh, and then finally in uh, uh, 2016, it was acquired by a Canadian-based photonics company uh, uh, called Poet Technologies. And there was some new local leadership established in January of 2017, which basically included myself uh, when I came in and took over uh, Denslide uh, in, in early 2017. And since then, we've kind of embarked on a journey of uh, transforming the company uh, into more of a uh, uh, <clears throat> manufacturing-oriented company, as well as keeping our R&D roots. Uh, as a result of uh, the progress we had made in the last three years, uh, it was spun off into uh, as an independent company in uh, November uh, 2019. Uh, we have a global presence. Uh, we have uh, our, our manufacturing and R&D facility here in Singapore as well as we have recently opened up an office in, in uh, China. Uh, in Singapore, we have a 15,000 square foot vertically integrated volume manufacturing facility uh, that includes uh, wafer fabrication, including epi growth, uh, testing, packaging, reliability testing, as well as we have our own uh, new product development lab uh, that is based here in Singapore. Our two major uh, uh, platforms we have are indium phosphide and gallium arsenide. However, we uh, in the last few years have focused more on indium phosphide business uh, as compared to gallium arsenide. Uh, and then over the last few years, we've developed capabilities on, on how to uh, make our lasers uh, compatible with the various uh, uh, photonic platforms that are out there. And I'll be talking more about it later. We have a rich patent history. We've got over 65 plus patents. Uh, so. It's an extremely strong R&D company, uh, but now our focus is uh, moving more and more towards uh, volume manufacturing. Uh, the two main markets that Denslide is in is of course in the photonic sensing business, uh, which includes uh, markets such as guidance and navigation, test and measurement, 
medical, oil and gas, and so on. And of course, the really big market of data communication, which is a relatively new uh, uh, product uh, segment for us. Uh, and I think uh, everybody kind of knows uh, there is a certain resurgence in the photonics world uh, because uh, it truly is driving the technology of the future. So some of the markets in the sensing area that we are in, as well as the products that are uh, in those markets. So uh, one of the biggest markets in sensing is uh, test and measurement. Uh, so things like OTDR, uh, fiber grading, bag grading sensing, or gas sensing, uh, metrology. So we have products such as ELEDs, uh, uh, FP lasers, DFD lasers, external cavity, uh, butterfly sleds and sled sets. Uh, a low DOP ASC box. Uh, these are all catering to the test and measurement market. Uh, the medical business uh, is not as big as test and measurement, but I think this is a new area. Uh, and then we have already established a foothold here uh, through our products being used in uh, uh, OCT, which is the uh, optical coherent tomography, uh, as well as uh, continuous glucose monitoring, which is uh, uh, essentially going to become extremely ubiquitous for a patient uh, uh, with, with diabetes. Uh, so for that, uh, of course, we have our sleds, we do some customized gain chips, uh, as well as our ILM boxes, uh, a low DOP ASC box uh, that, that we manufacture. Another up and coming area is the uh, LIDAR business. Uh, this is broken up into a wind LIDAR uh, for wake steering, uh, as well as, of course, uh, the big market of automotive LIDAR. Uh, we are already working with several uh, wind LiDAR manufacturers uh, to incorporate our FBGLs as well as our new uh, uh, narrow line with uh, laser uh, into this uh, uh, wind LiDAR systems. Uh, and then uh, uh, a little bit more ahead in the future would be the automotive LiDAR where we are developing customized SOAs as well as gain chips as well as uh, photonic integrated circuits that will go into uh, uh, these markets. Structural health monitoring uh, is another, I would say, a pretty new and up and coming monitor, uh, uh, market uh, for fiber optic using fiber optic sensing for structural integrity. And we have several products that are uh, uh, identified and manufactured for that purpose. Uh, guidance and navigation is of a special focus to us. We've been in this market for over 10 years, you know, and then this actually came out of some of the defense department work we did. Uh, so we've now developed uh, sleds uh, as well as PIC solutions for uh, fiber optic gyroscopes uh, and, of course, industrial robots. And lastly, the other uh, market for sensing is the distributed acoustic sensing uh, that is used for oil pipeline security or perimeter security. Uh, and again, our uh, external cavity lasers in the butterfly form factor, as well as our new uh, narrow line with lasers are used in these applications. Our other product portfolio is of course the datacom telecom uh, space. Uh, and you can see here, uh, it's a little bit of a complicated uh, slide here, but it shows the entire uh, communication network for the world. And then we participate in almost all aspects of this infrastructure, uh, the metro optical networks, uh, the fiber ac uh, access, which is the fiber to the home, the GPON or the XGPON uh, uh, systems uh, that are being deployed, both the front hall and the back hall for the 5G mobile networks, uh, the enterprise local area networks, as well as data centers. So all these essentially use our uh, lasers uh, that are, of course, modified and, and adapted uh, to each of these uh, different markets. Um, and then some of the products that we have uh, uh, that are uh, going into these markets. Uh, so in the PIC optical solutions, we make uh, DML lasers, uh, CW lasers, as well as the 25G, 50G quad pins. These are all uh, equipped with uh, technologies such as mode field adapters or spot size converters, and all of them can be uh, flip chip enabled. Uh, and really the different platforms we are talking about are silicon photonic platforms, a uh, laser uh, a packaging or la laser micro packaging platform, or even our ex-parent company, Poet Technologies Interposer platform. Uh, and of course, uh, as the world moves more and more towards coherent communication, 
some of the new products we are developing is uh, 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 the optical amplifier, uh, which is a very hot market right now, uh, as well as gain chips uh, that are all going into uh, developing uh, 400G transceivers or ITLA sub-assemblies. In the 5G space, uh, we provide uh, high-powered CW lasers uh, or 25G C-Temp, I-Temp, uh, CWDM6, uh, DML laser. So we provide all the six wavelengths. Uh, and then, of course, these then get put into a transceiver through either a TOSA or a TO CAN. Uh, and then this is where our actual lasers get in. Uh, and so we are providing 25G DMLs, 10G DMLs, and even 2.5G DML chips. So how do we enable this? Um, uh, so we are now uh, positioning ourselves as providing what is called platform agnostic laser solution. So every chip that we manufacture or every laser chip we manufacture, it supports both conventional and customer specific packaging technologies. Uh, so these could be, you know, assembly into the traditional, what we call discrete packages like TOSA, ROSA that are then put inside a uh, transceiver package. Uh, QSFP28 package, or uh, our lasers can be assembled into what is called a laser micro package. So there are some companies in the world that have a separate module that they make uh, specifically for the laser, and then they mount that laser onto a silicon photonics platform, or directly flip chip uh, onto a silicon photonics platform, uh, or uh, the port interposer platform. Um, and then this is where the flip chip capability is important. So how do we enable uh, these lasers to be platform agnostic? And it's basically by two main technologies. Uh, one of them is the integrated spot size converter. So we have IP that now allows us to increase the uh, spot size three times, four times, or even five times, which really allows for the relaxation of the alignment tolerances that are required uh, when you flip chip a particular uh, device onto, uh, onto a platform. Uh, we have now applied this, uh, both these technologies into our quad pins, uh, our DFB lasers, both the CWs as well as the DML lasers, gain chips, uh, SOAs, and also SLEDs uh, for sensing applications. I mean, we see the future of uh, uh, sensing uh, uh, applications to have uh, spot size converter enablement. <clears throat> so these are some of the key technologies uh, that we have internally developed over the last three years. Uh, within Denslite, uh, we provide what is called end-to-end -end, uh, photonics uh, uh, design to manufacturing. So we have uh, uh, two uh, MOCVD reactors. Uh, we recently purchased a G4, uh, which is an extremely high volume uh, uh, MOCVD reactor. It can produce up to 400 wafers a month. So capacity for epi wafers is not an issue. Uh, Plus, of course, we can do epi regrowths uh, for the DFB lasers. Uh, once we actually grow our quantum wells, we then, of course, apply the device design. It goes into what is called Fab B, uh, which is our device wafer fab, where we do the waveguide formation and metallization. Uh, and then we go into dye uh, singulation, or what we call APT. Uh, part of uh, uh, this process is also we have a new product development lab where a lot of our research work is done. Uh, and then here in the APT area, we do bar to die cleaving, HRAR coating assembly, packaging. We also have a burn-in and reliability test lab. Uh, so it's a full featured uh, vertically integrated company uh, that we can go from uh, uh, epi growth all the way into uh, uh, packaged uh, designs or packaged modules. Uh, just in summary of our uh, product portfolio, so we have the indium phosphide chip-based business where we make DFB chips for test and measurement, gas sensing, uh, of course, DFBs for uh, uh, 5G, 25G DML applications. Uh, we have FP lasers for the medical and OTDR field, customized gain chips. We also have uh, a low DOP SLED. Uh, for uh, fiber optic gyroscope applications. And uh, I would say the hottest area uh, is now the silicon uh, semiconductor optical amplifier area where a lot of the silicon photonic companies are wanting to amplify uh, the laser signal. Uh, so we've got some pretty good uh, 
you know, products in this area, both at 1310 as well as 1550. Then we have our module product uh, set, uh, FBGL, sleds, all in the butterfly form factor. We have e-leds, both uh, with and without the pigtail. Uh, and then finally, the uh, uh, integrated plug and play light module uh, uh, boxes with the drivers uh, to produce ultra narrow line with uh, single frequency lasers. We have an integrated sled box, a programmable box, as well as an ASC low DOP box. Uh, so essentially our product range covers anywhere from 1270 to 1690 uh, and powers from uh, 0.1 milliwatt uh, to 50 milliwatt. And finally, uh, uh, just to summarize, I'd like to say uh, Denslide, which was founded in year 2000, it was the first supplier to get uh, SLED telecordia qualification. Uh, and uh, we have expertise to operate R&D as well as manufacturing. Uh, we are a leading global manufacturer. We are one of top two sled suppliers in the world for the sensing market. Uh, we have international uh, customer base uh, with global coverage in China, US, India, Japan, Europe, and Russia. Uh, and I think all this has led to a strong growth in our revenues. Uh, in 2019, we grew 48%. Uh, and then uh, subsequently 2018 and 2017, we had also very good growth years. Uh, and, and 2020 is uh, looking to be not too bad. Uh, obviously, we are not going to see the same kind of growth we saw in 2019. But considering, you know, uh, that we are in the middle of a pandemic, uh, we, will still, we'll, we, we will still see some level of growth uh, in, in 2020. Uh, and I think the reason is because we provide, you know, the complete end-to-end -end manufacturing solution. We have IP that uh, completely... Uh, uh, encompasses vertically integrated competencies uh, across the areas of design, assembly, test, and packaging, as well as uh, box assembly, uh, which uh, are basically a system level assembly. Our uh, relationship with our customers is obviously based upon a lot of mutual trust. Uh, we provide end-to-end, uh, -end very flexible, on-time and customized solutions for our customers. Uh, to deliver really game-changing products for them. Uh, I think our objective is to make sure that, uh, you know, we differentiate uh, our customers' products. Uh, and I think as a result of that, we have a pretty large customer base in over 26 countries. And really our, our, our objective is really to become a world-class uh, company for platform agnostic laser solutions. And then be that catalyst and enabler uh, for the transformation of the data comm and sensing markets mm -hmm. uh, and then really be positioned to capture more market share uh, in some of the traditional areas like data comm, telecom, uh, which is actually a new area for us. Uh, but in, in some of the newer developing areas like automotive LIDAR, distributed acoustic sensing, um, gas sensing, wind LIDAR instrumentation. So these are all the markets that we would like, we see a lot of potential mm -hmm. and growth in. And we feel that our laser light solutions are positioned uh, very well uh, to go in and, and uh, supply to these markets. It is, of course, a, a great success story when you have a fully vertically integrated company that start by making the quantum wells and have, okay, we start with great material and then we go from there. There's quantum wells and try to find the right way for doing the packaging and going all the way to solving problems. And I could see in your slides that data con telecom, but also the guidance, the LiDAR market, which is something that's exploding. But then at some point during the presentation, you go and tell me, we want to push our market position on the SLEDs. SLEDs have applications mostly on the medical, on gyroscopes. What is, what is the growth uh, area that you see for SLEDs in Denslide? What kind of problems do you want to solve? Yeah, so I think the SLED business is... Uh getting new applications almost on a daily basis. Um, uh, there is already a huge market for the fiber optic gyroscope all over the world. As you know, uh, sleds are used in uh, developing these gyroscopes uh, for navigation purposes. And then navigation, you know, can be anywhere from a missile uh, being uh, navigated to a drone uh, being navigated. Uh, so I think we see a lot of growth in that market. Uh, we also see a lot of uh, uh, growth in the whole LIDAR business. Uh, and again, using the 1550 sled 
uh, or gain chips. Uh, so I think that's another up and coming area for sleds. Uh, and then, of course, uh, both the wind LiDAR and automotive LiDAR will use the 1550 uh, uh, sleds. Uh, and, and perimeter monitoring, I think that's yeah. another big area which is just coming up. A uh, lot of companies, a lot of countries in the world are applying that just for border security or even uh, uh, asset security. And I think those are the areas where we see the growth in the sled will always be a very steady Kager of 10 to 15% a year. It's not like the data com, telecom markets where, you know, things just, you know, go on technology. Unless uh, OCT enters the consumer, which may, may happen. And people are really looking at that. I think on that, we already had some inputs from a couple of big companies in the membership that are in the consumer product. If OCT goes in there, you're gold. I mean, you're actually gold already, Rajan. Thank you very much for a great presentation. We continue in Singapore.